here's a project <clears throat> for the day this is one of our omc almond shakers and what i'm doing is uh i got this tooling here so i got this cylinder and these uh, plates or jigs whatever you want to call them and these are set up to uh, press or pull or push whatever you want to call it the bearings out of the shaker head so here's your what we call our energy wheels inside here so these are the wheels that actually have the weights on them that cause the shaking action so you have your lower wheel and then your top wheel and the way this works <clears throat> the weights turn opposing directions and that's how you get the shake in out of the shaker <laughs> So there's a belt inside there that's been, I took it out, but it's driven off of a pulley right here, which is driven off of your shake motor or your VOAC motor as we call it. And like I said, it spins the weights opposing directions and causes a shake. Um, so there's two thick weights here. Don't ask me how much they weigh, I don't know. And then there's a set of top weights right here. And you can change your shake pattern um, with different weights, different sizes. So we have what you call the standard almond pattern. Um, if you get into walnuts or bigger trees, you'll put bigger weights in them. Um, but this seems to work well for us. So yeah, I'm gonna try this, uh, this cylinder, these adapters. I got some hoses that I gotta um, put in. And I'm actually going to plumb into this right here, which is your roll cylinder or your angle to change the angle or the pitch of the head depending on if the tree's leaning or whatnot so i'm going to do that that way i'm able to use the hydraulics of the machine itself i have a <clears throat> like 12 volt hydraulic power unit i guess you'd call it but it seems like it's kind of a hassle to lug it around it holds about five gallons of hydraulic oil and it's got an electric motor and a pump and it's kind of heavy and awkward so i talked to a friend of mine who <clears throat> works on shakers and he gave me this idea so Normally, what you do is you pound this, this, this pound this, uh, the, what they call the energy pin. So, this is your energy pin that you would pound into here. I got it kind of taken apart a little bit. Hold on, let me let me unscrew this. Give you guys a better idea. This is an adapter that came with the kit. Oh, phone's ringing. Hold on. And we're back, freaking telemarketers. If it's not my car warranty, it's my Sprint bill that I haven't paid, even though I'm a Verizon customer. So anyway, getting back to this. So that right there, that round piece, that is your energy pin. So that is this thing right here. And that thing is pressed in or pounded in to the hole and each one of these wheels has two bearings in it and the bearings this will go through the the bearings and this is the shaft that the bearings will ride on you also have a like a take up uh, like a wedge spacer here um, that wedges into this star wheel thing that we call the uh, pin boss and then you have a long bolt which the head's down i can't get it out but this bolt right here goes through there and you have this thick washer on each end top and bottom and you just tighten the crap out of it so they say uh 700 foot pounds or you know three quarter drive ratchet with a eight foot cheater pipe and maybe 10 a dug a dugas to tighten it up that works for us so anyway this the idea with this thing is to pull it or press it out or normally we were um which we did it the guy that worked for me did it and then even the dealer did it this way they'd pound pound this pin out and pound it in with a big sledgehammer now i don't mind using a hammer but i think each bearing's like almost 200 dollars. and if anybody knows anything about working with bearings and hitting them with hammers might not be a good idea it may shock it may take some of the life out of it um may, may knock some of the ball bearings out of the track a little bit or it could fracture something but you can see the hammer marks here you know from uh, over the years of changing the bearings um i don't know i just want to try this maybe it's going to be more trouble than it's worth i don't know it's pretty easy to swing a hammer but i'm thinking you know maybe i it'll be easier on the bearings maybe get a little life out of them more life out of them now with these bearings they're not greasable they're sealed 
so I've had them run 700 hours. I've had them fail at 100 hours after being changed. So it's kind of hit and miss, but I just want to try this. I thought maybe it'd be a little safer, a little easier on a guy to do. So I'm going to get this thing set up and uh, see if I can't figure it out. And then after that, I'll give you guys a little walk around of the shaker. And then I had somebody um, ask me about my truck. So I'll give a little walk around with that when I'm done. But for now, I'm gonna set you guys up and let you watch. So here we go. Okay, well, the hoses are plumbed in, so I'm going to test fire the cylinder before I hook it up to try it, so let's see. Well, I quit filming because uh, I could not get the pin to come out using the cylinder. So I already started beating it out in the normal way with a sledgehammer. So I don't know, maybe it's, I'm doing something wrong. I've never done it this way before. So I don't know, maybe with new parts and in, installing them, new parts might go in easier. I don't know. So I'm just gonna hit it the rest of the way out with a uh, sledgehammer. And then, um, I don't know, when I get new parts and talk to the guys who made this thing, maybe, like I said, maybe, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't think so. But anyway, I'm going to get to swinging. So since this one is 
kind of apart. I'm gonna walk you over to one of the other shakers and walk you around that one. So, here we go. Okay, this is our number three shaker. Same model as the one we were working on. So, same head, same everything. So you have your shaker head, like I was showing you guys, you, have, you know that. Uh, your roll cylinder, you know, to angle if the tree's crooked or not. Your in and out cylinder here that you, you know, slide in and out when you want to shake the tree. You have your boom here that the head hangs on. You have your pads. And then you have this side of the head is your clamp arm. So this is the, the clamp that'll move. And then you have your stationary side over here. So this does not move. Um, here's your shaker pads. So this is kind of a OMC only thing that they have. It, it's, a, it's a round, we call it a round air pad. So it's a round hollowed out pad that is full of um, what they call Nylertron. And the best way to describe it is it looks like, like pellets for like a pellet gun. About the same size, same shape, but they're uh, basically like plastic or some 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 form of plastic. So you you fill your pads up um, with that. Now you can fill it fill them up according to trunk size of the tree. So if you want to like wrap around the tree more, the less you're going to have. You know the you know the 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 less you want to wrap around it, the more. Um, us we run them. I don't know about one inch from the top which is a you know all around good uh fill to have it seems to work for everything but they run air through their pads so the the machine has an air pump on it and air will shoot out of these holes so the air enters the pad through here and out here so the idea is the air keeps the nylertron and the pads cool um also to aid in cooling um, underneath these flaps i'll open them up in a minute when i raise the head up there's a manifold under here um, that every time you clamp open um, through these hoses and through a tank and a pump in the machine um, it'll squirt a set amount of uh, water and silicone mix so the silicone is supposed to get into the rubber basically like impregnate it and then uh, keep it cool now if you don't run the silicone or the water you're going to overheat your pads, you're going to burn the slings up, you're going to uh, put a hole in the pads, and you're also going to cause damage to the tree because you have that friction. So you want to use the water and the silicone, you know, to have a little bit of lubrication so there's no friction um, between the flap and the sling here, which will cause it to grip each other, and then it'll actually uh, uh, bark the tree. Barking the tree means, you know, basically stripping the bark off of it. So when you do that, you open up the tree to disease. It's no different than us having a, an open wound. You know, we're open to disease um, or infection. And it happens, it's, it, it's gonna happen. You're gonna bark a tree, you know, whether it be operator mistake, machine error, or malfunction, or the tree is has too much moisture in it. Now, when we get closer to harvest, I'll explain that to you guys, you know, about when how we try to time shaking to when the tree is ready. So, we also have little rubber sweeper fingers in front of each tire. These go up and down off of a switch. And as you advance forward, they turn, and that's going to fling the nuts out of the way so you don't run them over. Um, this machine and that one are equipped with what OMC calls their fast system, fully automated shake technology. It's been out for a while, um, but basically what it is, you can set, a shake time, uh, engine RPM, um, what is it? Yeah, length of shake, engine RPM, and you can also kind of set it to do like a double shake, or you can set your RPMs to go up and down, and that kind of gives it a whip. But so all you have to do as an operator, you just have to line up with the tree, put your head out there, 
you know, put the pads in the right position, hit a button, the machine is going to rev up to its RPM. It's going to clamp the tree, shake it for the set duration, you know, or um, adjust RPM accordingly if you have it set that way. Then it's going to stop, open up, and the head's going to come back in. So it does that all by itself. Now, OMC does have a new system. The latest and greatest thing is their laser technology. So basically, it has a laser uh, thing on, out on the end of the head <coughs> that'll sense the tree. So it's sensing density. So it'll go through all the foliage. If there's any low-hanging foliage, and it'll sense where the trunk's at. And then it knows where to stop the machine at in the right spot for the operator to put the head out and uh, actually not the operator the machine does it so all the driver is doing is steering he's keeping the shaker at the right distance uh, from the tree so once he gets to where he wants the machine stops he pushes a button the machine sends the head out does everything it's supposed to do shake and unclamp and come back in and then I believe he hits another button and then it advances so a lot of controls are done on this joystick here and virtually with that technology that OMC has that you don't do that anymore now you can stop it you know and, and manually adjust if you know something's not right but it's it's pretty much almost autonomous um, that's kind of the way a lot of this equipment is going is manless just with the labor issues and stuff and cost of labor well cost of labor and availability is probably one of our biggest biggest problems so anyway i'm going to fire this up and kind of run you guys through it and i think i've done it before i'll go grab one of those fruitless mulberry trees over there it's not an almond tree but it'll shake down you push forward now if you want to slide the head out so what we call boom out you're going to move it left to right so right is going to send it out and bringing it back in left bringing it back in so then you got your buttons so your top two or your roll or your angle so depending on if your tree is crooked or not you can adjust it there and then finally you have your um, clamp shake and clamp open so when you get on the tree and you know where you want to shake at you're going to push that button and the head's going to close it's going to shake you're going to let off and you're going to open you know and just do that all day long so you can see it says shaker mode or shake mode manual so i'm going to push a button now it's in the fast so now all I have to do is we're just gonna imagine that the tree's out there and I'm gonna boom the head out. Okay, that's where I want it. And then I'm gonna push this one button and it's gonna do everything. Here, the engine rev up, shake, stop, open, come back in and the engine throttles back down. So with one push of a button, so find the head, or find the tree, Push the button. It's gonna do everything for you. So this is a good way to get, you know, consistent shakes. Because a lot of times what we'll do, you know, we'll shake a tree and judge it. Okay, we need to shake it for three seconds, four seconds, four and a half. I mean, we really don't go much over that because if, a lot of times if the nuts don't come out by then, they're not gonna come out. So at least with this system, you can get into the computer or the screen here and you can fine tune, you know, your shake duration, uh, your engine RPM to kind of give, you know, the different whips and shakes um, to the tree because with controlling the throttle the throttle is controlling the hydraulic flow the hydraulic flow is controlling you know how hard or how uh, how fast or how slow your weights are spinning 
And if you can change that, you know, to kind of give it that woo woo, that kind of up and down motion, it gives it that whip to the tree. Um, in some situations, like our other shakers that don't have this, we'll actually have the guys maybe kind of, you know, just kind of snap the throttle once in a while to give it a whip. Because a lot of times we're just running at a set RPM. So we have a switch here we can hit and then the engine is going to rev up and we'll usually shake about 18 or 1900 rpm so with this other switch we can bump it up and we just turn it off so these engines or these shakers have a 6.7 liter cummins in them our old horse over there the old shaker the 05 it has a 5.9 cummins in it um good strong motors um they, they work good for us so anyway that's just a quick overview of the shaker so I am going to go show you guys I'm just gonna go grab a tree over there and shake it just for fun so here we go Well, that was cool, huh? Anyway, I was gonna show you the flaps here, um, which I forgot. There are the slings and the flaps, show you where the silicone comes from. So there's a manifold here. There's a hole there, here, here, here. And every time it opens, just a little squirt of water will come out. And that's it, pretty simple. You have your big clamp cylinder in there. That's actually what closes and opens the clamp, causes the shake, so. Yeah, that's a quick and easy overview of the shakers. So, like I said, once season comes around, you guys will um, get to see them in action and really see what they can do. Just had some red diesel delivered, keeping us going. Anyway, it's the day after the uh, video or the part of the video where I walked you guys around the shaker a little bit, showed you that. So it's the 28th, Friday, May. So that means that this Monday is Memorial Day. Now I've always wanted to kind of do something, you know, for Memorial Day, something kind of special. Our shop's right off of a real busy road, so it's a good opportunity to, uh, you know, put some flags out or some type of display for people to see. Um, so I, I did get a couple flags and uh, I'm going to do something with a couple pieces of equipment. So, But anyway, Memorial Day pretty important special holiday to celebrate and remember, you know, because it's honoring those who um, sac gave the ultimate sacrifice for their country. For us, you know, the, the soldiers that died, you know, fighting our country's wars and battles and, you know, without that we'd wouldn't have the freedom we have. Um, I know America's kind of in a weird place right now, or it's been in a weird place for about a year with the whole COVID thing. And, you know, now we have a different president and, you know, I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat or whatever. Um, this is still the best country in the world. You know, we have more freedom than everybody else. Um, you know, I know sometimes it may seem like it's going the other way, but it's, it's still the best place to live in the world, in my opinion. So anyway, yeah, so I'm gonna rig something up to put a couple flags on uh, pieces of equipment. I got something in my eye. And um, so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna rig up something in the shop real quick to put on a couple pieces of equipment. And I'm gonna park them out in front of the office there. Like I said, the main road goes all the way in front of the shop and it's a really highly traveled road. So I don't know, just an opportunity to display some uh, patriotism and uh, honor those who died for us so anyway 
let's go in the shop and see what we can do. Tape measure, check. That'll work. Metal, check. Thanks for watching. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. And uh, don't forget to remember those who died for us, for our freedoms. Don't forget what Memorial Day is all about. So see you guys next time. Thanks.